With Rebel Heart Film and the artists that you plan to speak to across the country, what tips would you share with them on keeping their budget down? Wow. Well, in the, in, <laughs> there's, in, in, there's in the, so many. Mm -hmm. There's so many. In the script, I mean, just look at your script realistically and everything that's not necessary, get rid of it. I mean, if it doesn't serve the story, it doesn't need to be there. I mean, that's, that's like first and foremost. Because you know that in post-production, in editing, you're probably going to lose a lot of stuff that you didn't need. So if Your it script should not be more than 100 pages. Yeah. If it doesn't serve the story, <laughs> yeah. lose it. Because don't shoot stuff you're not going to use. You're yeah. not going to use more than 100 pages worth of footage. It's just not going to happen. You're yeah. not make, unless you're making one piece. You're not making you one know? piece. Um, is, that's definitely, that's definitely like, I, I would go, you that know. That would be the number one thing. Make sure, if, it, if it's like, you know, between 95 to 100 pages, you're in the right ballpark. Once you start getting into 120 pages, you're just stroking your own ego. And you're just shooting stuff that's gonna end up on the floor, you know? Yeah. So why waste days that are, you know, that, you know, that cost money for stuff that you're not gonna use? Another thing that I would say is just from like day one is, you know, use, and it's that thing like, conceive your script around what you have and use what you have. So as I said about Obsolidia, something that we were, you know, a way that we really kept our costs down was we use locations that we didn't have to pay for, you know? So I, I mean, it's an old thing saying, oh, you, you know, think of a movie that can be shot in your house or, you know, just use the things like the car in, our, in the film was our car, everything. It's, it's finding these, it's being sort of ingenious about making use of what you can get for free. Uh, that is going to keep your budget way down. It's when you have to start paying thing for you know each of those things that uh, costs can mount. When you ask people for locations that you want to shoot at, don't tell them you're shooting a film. Tell them you're shooting a video. Yeah. Always <laughs> play it down. Never yeah. play it up. Always yeah. say, like we're a just a video. little student video. We're just doing this little... And make sure you have at least one producer with a student ID. Yeah, we're doing a PSA. We're doing a you public know? service it's announcement. Yeah, it's... And, and that's yeah. all we're doing. It's nothing big. It's nothing fancy. And always <laughs> play it down. And the more you play it down, the more likely, two things, the more likely you are to get the location. And um, the... The other thing is, is that they'll feel sorry for you and give it to you cheaper than <laughs> what they would normally give it to a film for. Uh, you know, I think also though, it's a kind of like, I mean, it's really being strategic. When We've obviously gotten into a conversation about locations, but locations can be such a huge cost in your film. Yeah. Um, one of the locations in Obsolidia that was really a star for us was the, the Museum of Jurassic Technology, which is a museum here in Los Angeles that a lot of people have tried to film in before and they never, never allowed camera crew in before. And you know, the reason that we managed to get permission and we didn't have to pay for it. We didn't pay a dime. We were prepared to pay for it, but he gave it to us. He for gave free. it to us was, you know, it was just that thing about, we created a relationship with uh, David Wilson who owns and created the museum. I, you know, I gave him the script. I talked to him about why it was so important to have the museum in the film, what it represented, why it was like an integral part of the story and it wasn't just something you know like oh wouldn't this be cool you know it was like everything had a reason and you know and he ended up you know really being a huge fan of the the script and then the project and so he wanted to support it and i think like you know overall like that sort of tactic as a way you know if we're talking about how to save money and your budget overall is to take that sort of grassroots community approach to get people involved and it's not about getting people to do stuff for free and you know, like, you know, it, but it is like creating a community who are, are investing in the film in different ways, you know, so that, you know, it's not about the money. And one of the things I wrote actually in that Craigslist ad right at the beginning when I was looking for a line producer was, you know, if you're looking for a money gig, this is not that film. You know, this is a film to do because you absolutely love the idea of this film and you want to be involved in helping make it, it get made. You know, and if you feel that and you enjoy, you like the people that you meet who are already working on it, then this is, you know, then it's a film for you, but it's not about the money. And I think the more that you can attract people, and again, I, it's not about like not paying people because I, like everybody did get paid everybody on Obsolidia, except for us. Yeah. <laughs> we had deferred payment, but everybody else did get paid, you know, and I think that's important and because they, they deserve to be, they're doing work, you know. 
Um, but a way to keep the cost down is to really get everyone inspired. So there is like this feeling of, you know, we're trying to do something together as a community and we're all investing in it. And that, that will help keep your budget down because you will find in numerous ways to cut costs. And an example, another example of that in a certain way is that Chris would make breakfast for everybody, but fantastic breakfast. So, you know, like our catering budget was slashed because yeah. we were making the food. But again, that's something that's like, it seems like, oh, it's just about cutting the cost, but it's actually about creating a community thing again, you know, because they feel cared for. They, you, when yeah. the crew come up and it's like you, you know, like making the food and you've like, you've put some love and heart into that food for them. And you've been doing different. it since two o'clock in the morning, yeah. Yeah, sure. but I slept think, in a tent. Yeah, yeah. so I yeah. feel like there is a, you know, it's just, it, you know, that question about how to cut costs, you know, also to me feeds in, it's like how to make a movie in a way that's like, you know, that's more fulfilling for everybody and it's not about the money, you know, and engaging everybody who works on the film and everybody who's partaking it as much as possible into that philosophy. The painful decision to cut certain scenes that you really wanted, oh boy. but the cost was just too much, whether it was the scene with the cat or the kid that you'd planned to put in the film. What, was there any moment where you really had to hunker down and say, how can we not use this scene, but still have it relevant? Something no, relevant. absolutely, absolutely. I think that happens all the time. Like I think for me and also in my second film, I, I think that came up a lot as well, um, where you're going, okay, we can't afford to do this, but you know, for me as a writer, and it's fortunate if you're the, you know, if you're the director and you're also the writer, you can, you, f you figure these things out. You think, okay, we can't afford to do that. What is the essence of this scene though? Why is it there? What is the, you know, what's the story beat? What is what we learn about the character? You know, and how can we maintain that and retain the heart of what's going on, but do it in a way that won't cost as much. And I think there's always a creative answer to that and there's always a way to do it. And it's, it's not painful. Um, there is definitely, there's a phrase that people say about filmmaking, uh, that you have to be willing to kill your babies. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that many times. <laughs> and you know, it's absolutely true. And that, that's part of it though too. You know, sometimes you think that is one of the best pieces of dialogue I've written in my life and now I have to cut it, you know? Um, but I think if it's really that great, it will find a way at some other time. <laughs> like if you've come up with a line that's like amazing, it will find another place, you know? If you've come up with an idea for a scene, I think like, you know, It'll happen some other way. Like, I, I feel like, again, it's practicing non-attachment, but, uh, you know, you, you let it go. You just, you focus constantly. What's the heart? What's, what is essential? I've heard uh, also about screenwriting, and I think it's true of filmmaking too, which is like, it's like a line drawing, and you just want to, like, narrow it down to that line, you know? Um, don't, you know, don't convolute it at all. It's like, try to draw that person in one single line. And I think a film, it's like really get rid of everything that's not necessary. That goes into like the budget thing that you said yeah. before, you know, to, to help keep the budget low. Get rid of everything that's not necessary. And actually, you'll probably find that you make a better film because of that.